Hello, Libra. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you're doing great. Really looking forward to talking to you about all the messages that came through today. Uh, we're going to be looking at the ability to write and create and release uh, contracts. So that was one of the key things that came through in dreams and meditations. So a little bit more about that when we get into the channel messages in just a moment. My little furry assistant Apollo is waking up here and saying hello as well. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. We're going to be looking at the sign of Libra, and we're going to look at the next six to eight weeks, focusing on what potential you have, what you can really do to move yourself in the right direction. Let me put him down so we can talk. There you go, buddy. And uh, let's get started here. First of all, in just a moment, we'll be lighting the candles together just because I was busy working on your slide presentation. So I didn't have a chance to do that. And whenever I can't get it done before show, I'd like to light the candles with you. It's a, a good way to sort of like set the right tone for today. Um, just to let you know what's coming through in what order, here's my sort of schedule for each and every monthly reading. Um, as you can see, actually right here, you can use it for your sun, rising, moon, and Venus, actually any aspect of your chart that you happen to know. So just wanted to talk about that first. We begin with channeled messages, which come through uh, for me, mostly through dreams and meditations also through the act of research and just uh, kind of writing when I get set up here in the morning. So channeled messages first, then we'll look at the Celtic cross, uh, and then I expand that to look at areas of health, wealth, love, and destiny. After that, we'll go to a big idea, an overarching sort of energy that can put you in the right direction, and then blessings and blocks. And then we get a little interactive. I give you a chance to vote on some things that I think might be worth looking at, plus I look at something that I'm curious about. We look at readers and uh, viewers' choice. I always like to wrap up every reading with a combination of things, a meditation, a sound bath, and a chance for you to meditate on a question that you have for me. And I call that the final card. So at that point, we'll get a chance to kind of look at that as well. That is everything in a nice sort of nutshell there. Um, why don't we together light the candles and set intentions for today's readings and uh, reading rather, and then we'll get into the channel messages. All right. So let's, uh, let's get the candles and uh, get started. All right, I'm going to bring this first candle close because I know it's hard for you to hear my voice when I travel around the room. Um, I always like to start the first candle off as a connection to source energy. So for each of us, that might be different. You might call it God. You might call it the divine. You might just kind of talk to the universe or nature. Whatever your connection to source energy is, uh, I want you to tune into that right now. And let's set the intention now to connect to the highest possible energy in the universe and ask for protection as we do that. Um, so please, to the divine energy that's present, um, bless this reading today. Allow me to be a clear channel and to bring forth messages that are of the highest good. Okay. I have four candles on the wall behind me. I usually like to work with four archangels. I usually use um, the uh, or connect to the energy of Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, and Raphael, but you can connect to any ascended masters or protective energies that you'd like. All right, I'll try to speak up and project as I... Uh, ask for protection and connection to source with those um, angels as well. All right, Archangel Michael, please protect us today. Um, keep this safe um, and s keep this space safe and clear. Keep our energies and our intentions safe and clear as well. Archangel Uriel, please guide us through this. Help us avoid any unnecessary distractions while we're doing the reading. Thanks and gratitude to all angels as I'm working today with you. Um, thank you for being present even when I'm not aware of it, and thank you for listening to these um, prayers and requests. Archangel Raphael, allow for healing to take place in today's reading. And Archangel Gabriel, again, uh, allow me to channel through the message I need to channel. Allow all of the guides and ascended masters to come through as well. Again, only connected to the light, only connected to the highest energies. Amen. Thank you. All right. So easy to do. Each of us should do that before we connect to uh, sort of tools of the trade here and today we'll be using tarot so it's just a really great way to get started a couple of quick notes before i get into the channeled messages first and foremost if you would like reminders and like to know what's going on 
please join me on social media. You can find all of my links uh, right here. Before I get into the reading, I'll also post a link. Uh, Maria will also put them in chat as we're talking here. A reminder that I don't give uh, personal readings any longer. So if someone reaches out and says it's me, it's not. And also, uh, if anyone's asking for anything in chat or whatever, I don't use direct messages. So this is the way that we can connect. Otherwise, uh, you should you should kind of hold off on any connections there. Um, if you would like a reminder here on YouTube, please, by all means, hit the subscribe button. For some crazy reason, up to 70% of the people that watch sometimes don't subscribe. It's absolutely free. Not subscribing actually doesn't help the channel. It hurts it a little bit. So click that subscribe button if you can. It will, it will definitely help the growth and expansion of the channel. Um, thumbs up as well. That like button will help with engagement. And you can uh, leave a comment later on replay. All of these things are just free ways to show support and love, and I appreciate it. If you'd like to give back a little bit more, there's an icon right by the emojis. Um, I highlighted it right here. And this is a way that you can give back with Super Chat, Super Stickers. And um, later, if you want to do Super Thanks, all of that works as well. And uh, for more information, you can also go to my website. Let me go ahead and just give you some links here so that you have them um, in case you do want to learn more about me or what I'm doing. And here we go. I'll post that there for you. Okay. So there's just some links to my, uh, my website who I am, what I do, etc. cetera. Um, let me also just pull open the chat window in the background so I can see what's going on and then we'll get started. As I said, we're gonna start with channeled messages here just in a moment here. For me, the channeled messages come through again through, um, through my dreams and meditations primarily, um, but a lot of it also comes through um, just sort of like as we're in the flow here. And that's why I try to connect to all of the source energy when we get started. So if you've never kind of done a incantation or a benediction at the beginning like that, I really do think it's, um, it's something that will help you out as you get further into your practice. All right, just give me one second here. And okay, I've got everything set up. All right, so um, let me go ahead now and um, just pin that for you so you have it in the background. There you go. And let's go ahead and get the picture in picture set up for today's presentation. So again, these are channel messages that came through with dreams. And I'm going to talk about how and why these are important today. So last night, something came through that I don't think I've ever seen when it comes to um, dreams and meditations um, for for a sign. And it was the fountain pen. And I think it's a really nice energy to come through for Libra. Um, it's old fashioned. And for those of you that have never seen one, it's kind of like the natural progression from the quill that maybe, you know, um, old fashioned sort of, I would say monks and scribes were using um, to a more modern approach where they were putting ink in that sort of vein of the quill. Uh, and then eventually they got into sort of metal pens and whatnot. So um, as I was doing some of the research here, I, I saw that uh, basically early prototypes of this fountain pen could be traced all the way back to Egypt believe it or not, around like 900 uh, or so uh, in common reckoning. But it was the 17th through the 20th centuries that we saw this come into more of a sort of everyday tool sort of thing. Um, it did provide a lot of advantages over the quill. Namely, you weren't going to have ink all over your hands and you weren't going to have that sort of issue with it fading or, um, you know, sort of droplets of ink getting everywhere. So. The other things that we'll be looking at today, because it's connected to this, are contracts and then just the act of creation. So to me, the pen is all about creating, putting through this sort of cosmic flow, fluidity of energy, and then again, sort of what do you want to create? What do you want to let go of? All of these energies are coming through with the fountain pen. And it looks just like that emoji there. Again, I can't put pictures up so much because I have to get the rights to them. So um, I usually just use emojis on these slides. Okay, so... When I was really thinking about what the pen summarized to me symbolically, it's kind of the Hierophant card. There are certain things in our life that are kind of nice to have because uh, they, they kind of have this nod to the past. It's a nice blend of old and new. But it also can indicate rigidity and sometimes a block that the old ways will kind of put in front of us. So um, replacing or updating something that is antiquated could provide a sort of challenge or friction in your life. Sometimes it's necessary. Like where I live, they just updated the thing that we use to get into the apartments, like put in a new security system, which was great. Uh, and it, it's sort of like a nice update from what you see all around my city, which it looks like it's from the 1970s, a lot of these old dial boxes. So now there's this 
kind of modern thing, and that was kind of very cool. Um, and they didn't ask questions, they just did it. And I think that was probably wise because it would have been pushed back from residents that have been here for a long time. So sometimes we just have to push out an update to people and say, we'll work you through it. But sometimes, and this is why we have like historic preservation and um, special sites around the world where we decide not to deal with something that's beautiful and, and kind of part of the antiquity because we want to see where we came from. So I think your challenge this month is going to be walking the line of something that's traditional and something that's non-traditional. In an office or in a workplace, this could be a new policy, this could be a new idea, a new way of working. Um, this could be also something that you might want to patent if you're an inventor or an engineer, because you might be coming up with something that's so radical that it may not take off initially, but when it does, there's a lot of um, potential for it. And I wrote here in the sort of text that finding a little bit of uh, sort of like a marriage between the two might be really, really wise here without kind of like throwing away all of the history. Uh, so everything that you did in your life and lifetimes prior to now brought you to this moment. And if you've had a lot of good stuff going on in your life, then even the difficult things were part of that. And so we have to kind of like own our history on some levels and own it with flair. Because I think of the the quill and the sort of fountain pen is having flair. So definitely embrace where you came from. And if a lot of times, if you're not, if you're not afraid of that, and if you're not hiding it, then nobody feels like there's, that's not a weak point for you. You're like, yeah, I mean, exactly. I'm proud of this. I'm proud of the struggle. I'm proud of the work. I'm proud of the failures because they brought me to this point. Um, so that part is important. And then the other part is that some people may be so proud of where they are that they're un unwilling or unable to change. So change could be slow, one step at a time. That's how you kind of get the keys to the, the door there on the Hierophant. You have to kind of move slowly and pay your dues sometimes, but um, you're gonna have to navigate old systems, old beliefs and traditions this month, but you'll be fine because Libra's a dipl diplomat. So you're gonna be able to find that fine line between stagnation and progress, okay. Like ink flowing through a pen, you have to keep moving. And the Two of Swords or Eight of Swords energy could be the only thing that could hold you back this month from progress. Two of Swords happens when we feel like there is either too much that's unknown and it makes us kind of go into the traditional energy of the Hierophant, or we want to see everything. We want to guarantee. And sometimes life doesn't have guarantees. Sometimes we just have to follow our heart and go down the path that is most appealing or most engaging. Eight of Swords is not wanting to see what's in front of you. Both of these cards can be kind of in that same energy of sometimes the answer's right in front of you or the next step is readily available, but there's this resistance, this internal resistance. So see what there is, embrace what's available, and then take that leap of faith. You're going to be okay, all right? Fluidity and motion, uh, that's basically what the pen is reminding you. And the sort of graduation from a quill that had to be dipped into an inkwell to the fountain pen, which contained a cartridge or ink that's sort of stored in that um, basically uh, container above or cartridge meant that you have more freedom and that you could keep moving. You didn't have to keep starting and stopping. So that fluidity of motion and fluidity of energy is available to you this month. So the pen also represents contracts. So let's talk a little bit about contracts. What you probably have heard this a lot in spiritual videos before, but um, what is it? Well, basically, if you were to think of this life more as a curriculum, which is what it is, we've called in people, opportunities, blocks, challenges, um, great stuff as well, like love and opportunity. But it, it's all there to show us things that on a soul level, we we want to know, we want to believe, but we haven't yet fully kind of like embraced. So for some of you, there may have been lifetimes of uh, maybe like a negative experience where you weren't supported, where you weren't valued. So you're going to work on finding places where you have to like speak up for yourself, demand equal pay, equal opportunity or a seat at the table. Some of you might have had unrequited love. So you might be focusing on self love, on really being strong and independent, and then maybe finding someone who truly connects with you. You're trying to basically fix some of the old energy from the past. Uh, this is so important and, and a lot more is coming through as I'm just kind of talking here in real time, but 
This is why I, I warn people sometimes when they say I'm looking for a soulmate or my soulmate. Truth be known, you have multiple soulmates all around you, likely your parents, friends, maybe even your pet. There's a lot of different soulmate energies around you. A soulmate is someone with karmic connections, karmic baggage. The baggage could be great, like you had a really great lifetime, best friends, and you can't wait to re reunite. So it could be a reunion. It can also be someone who really caused a lot of trouble or you caused trouble with them. And now in this lifetime, you have to clean up the mess. That's what a soulmate is. It's a karmic partnership. So many of you are on the precipice of meeting a soulmate, a karmic partnership. You get to release the old contract and you get to decide with your spiritual fountain pen, are we going to write a new one or are we just ready to part and kind of go into the Six of Swords sunset? That's up to you. And that's what's kind of interesting with soulmate energies. A lot of times it can burn really bright. And then once you've kind of gone through everything, it's sort of like, okay, I think we've learned everything. I think we've got everything. So I want you to kind of do some spiritual housekeeping with respect to karmic relationships and decide, as I put in this first paragraph here, um, are you ready to release some of them if you've outgrown them? You can also, fun fact, uh, release vows that you've made in old lifetimes. So if you were someone who worked in a spiritual sort of capacity and you took a vow of chastity or poverty, not uncommon for things in the past and sometimes even now, you can release those vows of poverty and chastity. So if you've been, if you feel like I can never find someone, I just seem to kind of always, it fizzles out after a few dates, or I'm always struggling with my money, try a contract release when it comes to your connection to prosperity and abundance. Say, um, dear God, universe, divine energy, um, I'm now ready to receive abundance in all forms, including love and including money or material good, because I'm ready to allow for that energy of opportunity and divine uh, power to flow through all aspects of my life. I'm not going to limit myself. I'm not afraid of love and I'm not afraid of money. These are powerful things to do, by the way, and you may feel that sort of like moment where it just clicks. I had a lot of lifetimes where I was working in a spiritual capacity. I was given the opportunity to see it in dreams and I realized because it was almost a dozen, I thought I need to release that vow uh, of, of chastity and of poverty. And as I was doing it, you have to, I had to do it a few times, but I, I actually felt like an energetic click when I knew that it had been released. So don't be afraid to do it. If you've, if you've been ex just experiencing challenges, you can do that. You can also say, I'm ready to release debts and sorrow and um, any regret from the past. You can always let go of that stuff. You don't have to hold on to it. And that opens you up to experience the antithesis of that, which is abundance, which is love, unconditional love, etc. Um, remember that you are the author, you are the creator of your own path, of your own journey. So this is your chance to really see what's available to you, what can be. And I think that's really exciting. This is all about expansive energy today, and your reading is going to be all about expansive energy. Um, I actually have a card here that I almost never use because I, I do have the Toth deck, but I don't read with it that often. So here we see one that's um, it's 20, right? So that would be um, judgment. So um, judgment is that sort of step between who you were and who you can be. It's the rising of the soul after it's dead. But in the Toth deck, it's the Eon here, which is kind of like the universe. And we see like all these, it's almost like a Russian doll. You see like a man and a woman and then all this sort of other energy around it. And it really does show that this body is just a vessel. Um, so if you're not expanding and you're not growing in your life, then you're stuck. And what we're going to try to do is get you unstuck in some point of your life. Um, I put a little sort of prompt at the end of here, and it's more of a it's more of a sort of homework or a rhetorical question. But I should say, are you doing anything right now to bring a genesis or a creation of something new and amazing? If you're wishing away the hours, the days, or if you're just feeling like you're in the motion, not really kind of just part of a, a big machinery or cog uh, in this big sort of engine, then this is the wake up call here, this card and this sort of what I'm talking about. It's your call to action to use your potential. This came to me and I've been seeing this uh, uh, quite often. This came a couple of months and then this time it was even further out in the cosmos. But my guides have been taking me 
into areas of the unknown. Um, so it felt like I have a, a few deceased family members that will serve as guides. So one of them was taking me all the way out into the edge of the universe. And I'm like, there are no stars here. It's just space. But, but what my guide was showing me was that space was potential. And we were basically at the end of the universe, which is currently in an expansion uh, and maybe until it enters, uh, what is it, entropy or whatever. But that's going to be trillions upon trillions upon trillions of years into the future. So much like this universe, we're almost eternally expanding and um, we are infinite. We have this fascination in literature with um, immortals. Guess what? Our soul is immortal. Our life, this lifetime is a mortal experience, but our soul lives on and on and on. It wants us to expand. It wants us to get past the blocks and the fears and the things in our head that tell us that uh, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm, I'm too, too old, too young, not this enough, not that enough. So this is your chance to really break through and expand. And I think if you can do that, you'll be surprised with how far you can go and what the universe avails to you when you decide to really embark upon that. OK, so we got a little deep <laughs> in today's uh, reading, but that's important because I do believe Libra of all signs is able to kind of go out there in the air and see things. OK, so today I may use one of the two new decks that I just purchased. I've got some new ones and they should be coming by the weekend. So I'll be having some. I, I was looking through your recommendations last night and I purchased a couple of new ones and I'm going to try to do a couple of new new ones after that. But I think what I'm going to use is um, one that just came like I just used this past weekend. It's called This Might Hurt. Um, it's on my website. And um, yeah, it's a really beautiful deck. I'll show you a few cards right now. Bright colors, modern sort of interpretations here of Rider Waite Smith. But we'll use this one today because it's new, because it's fresh, and, um, and I have more coming. So special thanks to all of you that took a moment or two to suggest some, uh, some decks. And I still have that post. It's on my community tab. I was reading through it. So if you have anything you want me to look at, let me know. You can also put it in the comments later on replay because I do read all the comments and I'll keep an eye out for deck suggestions. All right. So we're going to now uh, take a look at the Celtic cross. Again, this can be used for sun, rising moon and Venus. You can also watch on behalf of other people that you know. Uh, and with that being said, let's go ahead and turn the camera down and take a look at what's coming through for this month. Again, this is for the next six to eight weeks. So you have a lot of potential here to really affect this in a, a positive way. Interesting. We'll let those two sit on top of each other. We have a couple of sticky cards here today. It's because it's a new one, but I'm going to let it go and you're just going to get some, <laughs> some complex messages today. All right. You have a lot coming through Libra today. A reminder, as always, if you have questions, save them until the final card. You'll have a chance then to meditate and I'll pull some energy on that. Is everyone feeling the energy of the full moon? By the way, we just got through that yesterday. Definitely was affecting my dreams and uh, general energy. I'm feeling better today, but always feel that new moon and or full moon energy rather when it comes through. Speaking of lunar uh, sort of influences, since we're looking at the month ahead, I mentioned this in one of the uh, sort of the weekly collectives on Sundays, but we're going to be having two full moons in the month of March, uh, depending on your location. Definitely one at the beginning. If you happen to be around Mountain Pacific or further west, 
then you'll have two. Anything that's basically, I would say, uh, I would say Eastern zone or Europe or anywhere else, it's going to be one at the beginning of March and one at the beginning of April. So we have two kind of like opportunities for this this breakthrough energy. So I feel like there's a lot of potential, there's a lot of expansion, and that's why expansion came through so loud and clear for you. Let's start with your catalyst cards. Um, Libra, you're gonna have a lot of plural cards because I was getting sticky, sticky cards today no matter what, didn't matter which deck we were looking at. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the catalyst and then how this applies to you. So the catalyst for you is a chance to really connect with uh, something in your life that can open you up, that can create action or activity. We have an agape card here, um, which also appears in uh, another one of the decks that I use. And it's a beautiful energy because this is unconditional sort of love, self-love, the, the flow of the energy of the universe. Um, and this is kind of why I was asking you with that last slide that I was putting together. Are you doing something that's allowing um, you to feel like you're expanding and growing, or are you feeling like passion? This is really hoping that you can and, and encouraging you to do that because when you're in that expansive energy of love, then you're unstoppable. And what I like about this card is that there is really no reversal. Uh, the Agape card is always in the right position. And I forget which other deck has it. Um, I think it actually might be the, the Luna deck might have it too. And they did the same thing where there's Agape uh, uh, in both directions. So whichever other deck does it, I actually saw some, some parallel on this. So as long as you are in that energy of passion and love, you're in the right direction. And even if it feels like you're taking you know, a, one, a 180 or a 90 degree turn and doing something different, that's saying, but that's where you're supposed to be right here, right now. Okay? So... Do something that brings love and passion in your life. Love yourself. Surround yourself with people that love you. If there are conditions on the love, then it's a sign that it's time to release that, move beyond that. Then we have the cave card here. So some of you may be coming out of that hermit shell. Um, and this reminds me a lot of the hermit card because we actually see a star in the distance. And in the hermit, it's protecting its light. It's kind of... It's, it's keeping a secret, and I would say for you, there's this chance to really let people in on the secret that is your passion, your skills, your abilities, your true sort of self. So I'd love for you to come out of that cave and really just love who you are, what you do, etc. And a lot of times we do hold ourselves back because we are afraid. Will someone love me? Will they understand me? Is this safe? Will I be okay? Let's look at the cards and see what insights they have to offer for you. All right, beginning with your center card, the Four of Pentacles. This is a perfect example of what we've just been talking about, holding on to something. Um, this can also be sort of like that a nostalgic energy that I was talking about, but holding on to something because it feels like this is predictable, this is the way it's always been, and if I let it go, what else will or can be? But you are definitely... If, you're, if you or someone in your life is doing this, then what happens is you're not seeing the true potential. And I always like to remind people with the Four of Pentacles, it's just the foundation. Uh, I was talking about the Toth deck, but in the Toth, I believe it's, you'll see it in the four corners. And I always like to think of that as the four corners of a, a house or a building. So what you've got right now is the building blocks to something bigger and something better. When you put that down, when you let it go, you make room for more. Uh, you don't You don't basically let it go and there's nothing more. So when it comes to opportunity, when it comes to love, when it comes to ideas and what you can do, you're just at the tip of the iceberg, okay? And the Four of Pentacles is reminding you to work on being open to receiving more. It's really important that we look at these two cards uh, on top of each other. So let me go ahead and show the desk again here. We'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see it better. And um, so we have the four of pentacles, and then we have the five of pentacles right on top of it. So the five of pentacles can be a card that comes through both of these, actually, when we're accepting less than we should. So one of the karmic lessons, and that's not even kind of like what the purpose of the whole reading was, but because I saw karmic partnerships, uh, aka soulmate energy coming through, we have to look at this. It's about finding and fighting for more. We see ten of pentacles here in the outcome. Actually, a bunch of pentacles. We, the ones that stuck together were queen, page, and ten. Um, so 
you got all <laughs> that was basically a lot of energy to come through together so here what we're seeing is a chance for you to really um, not limit yourself anymore to step into possibilities okay because there's limitless possibilities that wanted to pop through in the in the, um, the outcome here okay here's what's holding you back for many of you what we're seeing is fear and for some of you the the sort of projections or the insertion of thoughts from others so what might be happening for you is that someone else in your past because this can also be a part of the five of pentacles they said to you you can't do this because and then dot 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 it might be because you're not smart enough because what will people think because i don't think you can do it um, whatever it was, it could have been a projection that then kind of inserts itself in your head. What you're going to be doing this month is freeing yourself from that energy of fear or frustration or um, limitations from others. That was them. That was their sort of limits that they put into your head. And you're going to just say no thank you um, to that. A lot of times the Nine of Swords is not as bad as it seems. I've said this before with the Ten of Swords. Um, what it is is stress-based. The Ten of Swords indicates a full stop after which you know that you have to go in another direction. Like, I can't do this at all anymore. I'm ready to move on to the rising sun, the better horizons. With the Nine of Swords, there is this understanding that I deserve better than this, and I'm not going to be afraid to be who I am, especially with this card reversed here, and I'm going to step into my power, okay? There's some work to be done this month, um, but it's going to lead to good things. We have the Five of Wands here in the recent past, and it's basically saying ah, this again. And the card is reversed, and I, I talked on the weekend about this a little bit. There's a joyful card uh, in the background, or joyful uh, image in the background, that, that little puppy dog saying, all right, I'm just going to do my own thing. So for you, it would be fun if you could find joy in the sort of general progress of change and growth that that's basically intrinsic to making progress right it doesn't happen overnight we have to invest we have to sort of like push along but if you can see and celebrate the small steps towards your goal it's going to be a lot more fun and also if you're not enjoying what you're doing that's a wake-up call to sort of figure out why am i continuing to do this is it to vicariously fulfill someone else's dream or is it because my heart itself said that this is right for me? Be that as it may, you just have to push through a little bit of the energy around the beginning of the month. And what we see is that it's well worth that energy and that effort because we do have a Six of Wands. Six of Wands card was reversed. So there's a reminder with this to basically focus on doing what's right because it feels like it's right. Not because of peer pressure, not because somebody... Um, instructed you, expected you, or somehow kind of put you into this sort of prototype, you're going to instead say, no, I'm doing this because I think it's right, because I feel that it's right. And when you do that, then you actually can completely change the way people see you and you bring in more abundance and opportunity. So what's availing itself to you is change. We have the death card, but the death card is reversed. So what this means for some of you is an unexpected turn in the road, a change that you can make and take control over. I don't mind when I see tower or death reversed. Tower reverse means that you're getting ahead of the change that you're going to raise your hand and somehow mold and shape what's possible. Death reverse can have two different connotations, but based on what I'm seeing, it feels like with the six of wands that this is positive. So this is saying, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to hide from the energy of death. I'm going to embrace it. Um, and what we see here with this is we even see someone kind of like begging death here. Please no. the thing with death. It should just be called transformation or change. It's going to do what it, it needs to do. So if a change is about to happen in your life, this could be um, loss of job. This could be a new job. This could be a relationship that's like I said, kind of taking its, itself in a different direction, the Six of Swords going towards the sunset or something coming in. Change can be both, endings and beginnings. The sooner you embrace that, the sooner you can kind of get to the next thing, to the icing on top, that cherry on top. So you have to move through the energy of change. What, what change is asking you to do is to be self-sufficient, independent, and to believe that she's really learned the lessons that there's more. I can do this. It'd be nice to have 
uh, love, support, and approval, but I don't necessarily need it to be successful to be able to do what I need to do. Some of you are getting ready for a new job. <laughs> when we put death and the nine of pentacles together, this is basically saying, I've learned everything that I need to from uh, this current opportunity, and I'm ready to step into something different. So don't be afraid to take that leap, to take that jump. I think some really great things um, await you if you're willing to do that, okay? As we look here at your, your heart, your soul, and how you're kind of showing up for others, uh, we have the Queen of Swords in reverse, and that's you, Libra, and I'm happy to see it coming through. With the reversal of this card, you got a lot of reversals this month, but I'm not worried about that because you just got a lot of cards in general. Uh, Queen of Swords in reverse is about saying what you need to say. And sometimes that's going to be unpopular. Sometimes it's going to be exactly what people wanted and needed. And that's why they want you to be a part of the discussion. <clears throat> I recently had an experience with some friends and family where it was almost as if there was a gag order put on something like you can't talk about this or we're not allowed to go there. What it really did, and you, I'm sure many of you have seen this in work environments, <clears throat> it kind of, it creates a, a full stop and it's sort of like, well, what can we do and why can't we do this? Because if there's something that needs to be resolved, let's say there's a disagreement or there's an issue with resources if it's work, or if there's an emotional issue and someone's upset, when you deny them the ability to say what's on their mind, it's basically like justice reverse too. Um, it's just not right. So this is about you deciding to say, I know it's unpopular, but we need to talk. We need to, we need to sort this out. So this month, you may just kind of get into a situation that you have to use your voice and say, let's talk and then let's have some fun then let's move on. But, but we do need to deal with this. And so the Queen of Swords isn't afraid to create a few waves here and there and to really fix things and get them in the right direction. So... Do what you need to do. I have faith that you're going to be able to find the right way to do it. She's also very action oriented. So she's going to say, this is how we're going to do it. And I'm going to get started. Who's in? She definitely takes um, sort of like she takes the reins and gets other people excited and engaged. So leadership opportunities absolutely are kind of like tapping on the door and saying, are you ready, Libra? Because we have a lot of opportunities and we need you. So using your voice, being um, direct, speaking up, stopping something if it needs to be stopped, starting something if it needs to be started, that's all going to be important. But this is a time where you are going to need to use your voice a little bit more. As we look at what's going on in the environment, we have the King of Cups. Uh, King of Cups is reversed. This could be love for you, by the way. This could just be a great opportunity. Uh, even though it's reversed, it's a positive card. What you might have to do is meet the person halfway. We see him out there in his own world, um, possibly in his own head space or in his own heart, kind of feeling his way through things. So the Queen of Swords is going to come through and say, um, because she's air anyway, she can kind of like come, come down and meet him where he's at. And so the challenge here with leadership is you may have to work with someone who has more power than you, but less experience, um, who has maybe more years on the planet, but again, maybe you have more wisdom. Whatever it is, there's a little bit of a, of a delta in age, experience, or maturity. But to be, to be honest, to be frank, you're actually on the same level. And so what you're going to try to do is uh, show them that you are not afraid to respect. Remember, we saw the Hierophant when I was doing the channel messages. So you're going to respect, respect protocol, but you're going to surprise them with the level of insight, maturity, wisdom, and the depth of knowledge that you have. And by doing that, you have the capacity to really kind of win them over. Um, if it's love, this is a kind of fun mix for the two of you. I'm, I'm seeing you showing up here, and I'm seeing a really nice water sign, a lot of passion coming through. And that's what we see here, and we'll talk about this next. All right, so when I look at where this is all taking you, we have two really great cards. We have the Ace of Pentacles reversed, and then we have the Ten of Cups. So we'll start with the Ten of Cups. It's love. It's opportunity. Um, cute little heart there. You can hardly see it. So for many of you, there's this chance to step into something new. And maybe for the first time, <clears throat> there's someone or there's a place that truly kind of just embraces you for who you are. And as I said with that final slide in my channeled messages, it's really important to feel that sense of connection 
and to feel that you are, even here with this agape card, you are giving and receiving love. It needs to be something that's uh, reciprocal. And if that reciprocity is not existing, then it's time to move on. Ten of Cups. Things could get serious. If you are, let's take it to non-relationship things first. Let's say you're freelancing for a job. Uh, this tells me that you would do a great job, hit it out of the park, and unexpectedly they may offer you something. Uh, let's say for some of you that it may just be a casual friendship that you have with someone. You decide to, maybe this is something that you could, you could see yourself in a business partnership. This could also be love. This is an invitation, a proposal, or somehow an offer. Uh, and it's unexpected because it's reversed but not really unexpected because we have the Ten of Cups upright. So this month, Libra, be a little bit of a social butterfly. Give yourself a chance to put yourself in situations you normally wouldn't find yourself in. And I know I have to sometimes push myself to say yes, but invariably when I do it, I'm very happy that I did it because uh, it opens up new channels and it can reignite some connections from the past that you thought might have fizzled out. So you have a chance here to resuscitate and to see new things. Also, uh, <clears throat> for those of you that have a small business or are looking to grow your business, this is great. This is word of mouth, organic growth, and you might have to invest again in your business to keep up with growth, which means you might have to hire or expand your, your workforce a little bit. All right, so you have a few cards in Destiny. Let's start with, um, and they're all kind of connected, even though I shuffled it, there's still a bunch of pentacles, so we're going to take it. Um, so the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles are showing me that for some of you, there's going to be uh, a word of mouth that actually brings you to a new opportunity. Love could come through a work engagement, like going to a work party or something. Uh, a new job could come from something that you find out if you go to a barbecue and hang, hang out with friends. There's going to be a little bit of mixing and matching of work and opportunity this month. Uh, and also, by the way, this can be love and this can be marriage. This can be a friendship or partnership and this can be a contract long term. So we're seeing the potential to take something to the next level. Looking at the queen cards and kind of pairing them up because I'm, I'm hoping to kind of show you the parallels. That's This is why we got three in this outcome here. So we have for you, if we're looking at you and another person in your life. You're coming through very to the point, very able to see things on a high level. And we see someone else who's very sort of stuck with, I need to see the numbers. I need to see the data. I need to understand how this will work. And uh, thanks to people that identified the imaginary jackalope buyer. Um, but so there may be something that's not quite in reality. Once I understood that that was not like a a rabbit, but it's a jackalope, which doesn't exist. So we're looking at someone here who's normally grounded, but may have something that's kind of like, just sort of like hearsay, or she might be going on just word of mouth knowledge and not really grounding it. So I think one thing that's going to be important when it comes to money and big decisions is getting real and making sure that you can quantify and prove all the data, make sure that it, uh, the data are correct. And if they aren't, then you're going to have to look in new areas to make sure that you're kind of going in the right place. So Libra, you may find yourself in a page position, giving and receiving and discerning between what's real and what's not real this month. And that discerning energy could cause some of you stress, but you're going to successfully navigate through this. And you're going to find what's worth it and what's not. Um, and again, let people fight if they need to. A lot of times, five of wands can be territorial. I like to kind of think of the hummingbirds that will fight for nectar, right? But you're just going to kind of get in and get out. And you can let, it's not, it's kind of like sometimes when there's people arguing over things that are unimportant or aren't controllable, let them have their kind of argument. You're going to step back and get the work done. And you're going to just keep pushing forward and pushing through the page needs to sort of like not necessarily take a side on this stuff. It's like, here's what I found. Here's the research. Here's my recommendation. Let the bigger group look at it. And hopefully with the six of wands, we see enough common sense that it'll be pushed in the right direction. OK, so you may find yourself as the middle person um, kind of stuck there trying to bring it all together. Um, but all you have to do is make sure that what you offer is solid 
and you give your recommendation, get in, get out, okay? But gosh, you have so many great uh, monetary cards coming through this month. So I'm going to say this, if many of you have been feeling that things have been on the downslope or you've plateaued, this is the month where the plateau ha is going to shift, but what's necessary is that you have to take uh, a change. You have to decide to let something go. Try something new. This is maybe challenging for those of you that are on a, like in business or having trouble in love or whatever, but really try something that you would never try before. And it's kind of like wearing a different color for a shirt or an outfit. Sometimes it really kind of like brings out a different energy that you wouldn't expect. So the same thing is true of trying on a different persona or trying a different routine. Uh, when you kind of allow yourself to step into the shoes of someone different, all of a sudden you might feel like this really fits. Maybe I am a leader. Maybe I am an artist. Maybe I am this or that dot, dot, dot. You can fill in the blanks. Okay. So good expansive energy for you really nicely in alignment with what I was seeing when I was channeling earlier. So I love what I'm seeing success and a lot of abundance. Uh, when we're looking at this success, abundance and abundance, but the abundance is right on it's like the gatekeeper is death <laughs> so that means that something has to go in order for this to come in okay let's go ahead now and move on to the next portion this is going to be your expanded forecast where we look at health wealth love and destiny each one of these sections is multi-part so it's going to give us a new view or vista of what we just talked about we're going to start with health first and we have this imaginary creature here um, and when i'm looking at this for health what it's telling me is one of the best things that you could be doing right now is allowing yourself to dream, to play, to engage with artistic or just sort of like fun endeavors. I feel like I say this a lot for different signs, but it's because for whatever reason in modern times, we've been taught that, you know, it, all we have, all we must do is work. When we play, it's somehow letting people down. So I want you to give your imagination uh, sort of some exercise, do some things that you might like, whatever that is for you. It's different for everyone. For some people, it could be cooking, the art of cooking. It is an art, uh, especially when you see how people prepare and season and then also plate the food. Definitely an art form building construction. That's an art form. Not everyone can take raw materials and make it into something landscaping and gardening. That's an art form dance. Of course, singing, writing, um, composing music, of course, as well. So all of these things are different expressions of core creativity. And your heart and soul wants to kind of connect. And when I was looking at the expanse in front of me, I didn't feel like it was lonely. I felt like there was possibilities. Big difference between feeling like, uh oh, I'm, I'm all alone and there's nothing versus, wow, what do I want to put into this space? Okay, so dream and really focus on heart and head heart chakra and the seventh chakra as well and think like what am i being guided to do am i expanding here am i expanding here because if you're not then all the other things close down a little bit and that's why um, you may not be getting what you deserve here we're going to be talking about wealth in a second because i feel like some of you are not getting your fair share and we'll definitely talk about that in a second and but first things let's let's kind of take a look at all of the wealth cards here i'm sorry health cards so the health cards here First and foremost, I have to talk about Nine of Swords in the deep past. It feels like some of you are making some progress with this, but uh, because it is in the past, but this has to do with fears and anxieties. Can I do this? Will I be okay? Uh, what I've started to do when I go to bed is I will listen to meditation music. Um, sometimes I'll listen to the po a podcast. Um, sometimes I will listen to nature sounds. I have to kind of like deprogram and shift gears like from my mental processes so that they can kind of go in a different direction. That's a really nice way to get rid of the, the nine of swords energy. If you're really busy, um, this is a normal thing. Meditation, of course, as well is the number one way that you can help with all of this. But um, just doing what you can to make the sleep environment better and to say, I've done enough for today. Yesterday, I had that thought. I was possibly thinking I'm probably going to do an impromptu on um, Friday or Saturday, probably Saturday. But last night I was thinking about it and I thought, no, I need some rest. I need to be ready for Libra. I need some sleep and I don't want to stress myself out. So I always listen to my, my soul and make sure that it, it, you know, I'm not overdoing it. So take care of yourself, nurture yourself. 
With the four and the five of pentacles, there's a lot of energy around the heart. Um, this card, actually, the, the four of pentacles, we, see, we usually see that coin right around the heart. The five of pentacles, when we look at it, it's an emotional sort of scar that can happen. In addition, it can also be um, something from our parents or our siblings. It's usually pretty close. So you might be working through some of the familial energy of, of the past, and, and this is a chance for you to kind of like move beyond that and say goodbye to some of those old scars. Uh, work on circulation here. It, a lot of times you'll see, not in this card, but usually there's someone on crutches. So you may be having issues with uh, maybe knee, hip, ankle, foot, it's lower extremities. And as we get older, that's a part where basically it takes a beating when you think how much weight the knees and the ankles have to carry and how much movement the hips have to do. So just be kind to that part of your body. And it may be very, you know, gentle type activities like, um, you know, swimming or walking. I like to kind of remind folks here, we're looking at cards and energies around cards. So if you are going through any pain in your body, you should definitely talk to a doctor. But their gentle movement of the body is generally a good thing. And that's what the Five of Pentacles is reminding us. All right, uh, looking again at the cards here, uh, just doing some cardiovascular energy as well. A lot of movement and then a lot of sort of shifting of stuff in your head. Nothing catastrophic here, by the way. Um, the death card in reverse can be a close call. So if you do have a wake up call, you know, you go to the doctors and they say, if you don't change this, it won't be good. Just take that as an opportunity to change because it's being modified by the nine of pentacles, which is highly successful. So you'll be able to get through your cha your challenge or your, your sort of stagnation, but you just have to embrace the energy of change. And the rest of the cards are pretty, um, pretty much about relationships and opportunities, but a lot of the energy here at the center is about you. So um, imagine something better, have some fun and um, try to find like that silver lining as well. And that's kind of what I'm seeing with the fantasy card. Okay. Let's move on to wealth. And there's a lot to talk about with wealth. I feel very heartened and excited and optimistic, Libra, about your resources in the future. And wealth is going to be different whether you're a student or working or retired. And we'll kind of break it down in those uh, different areas in a moment. But we got a card that I would think is like exactly what I would hope to get for Libra, which is balance. And it says, um, I bring a state of perfect harmony into my world and I do so without judgment. So... That's the hope, right? That's the goal. The balance card is in reverse. And the truth of the matter for many Libra, um, speaking from experience, I'm Libra's son, is that what, what can happen sometimes is you become the balancing sort of force for others. But in doing so, your energy falls out of balance. And in the resources this month, we're definitely seeing that at the center. So nice segue and nice way to get into what's coming through here at the center. Four of Pentacles is something that I would see for many of you that just have this amazing capacity to give. So if you are a coach, if you are a mentor, if you are a teacher, anybody who leads the way, what I see with the Four of Pentacles is in the past, not so much necessarily right here and right now, but in the past, you may have had a tendency to give more than you needed to. We're taught as children sometimes to just kind of like give 110%. So it's okay to do that. It's even, it's even advantageous from time to time, but it isn't sustainable. And the Nine of Pentacles is about sustainability. So this has to go. What some of you are afraid of is rejection or hurting someone or losing someone. So if someone is in your life only because they can get you for cheap or for less or that you give too much, they're not there unconditionally. And you've also created this sort of karmic imbalance or karmic debt. So really what you're doing is paving the way for um, balance and harmony by saying, I can do this much. I can't do this much. And if you want this, this is what it requires. That's it. And then the people that are truly there are truly there and they're going to embrace you and be by you. What a beautiful um, Ten of Pentacles, right? Look at all the sort of hanging lights there with the stars. So you're one of those stars. You are just as worthy as that person. And if you give a lot to them, there should be balance and uh, reciprocity coming through. So number one message for all Libra this month is to either maintain, establish, or reclaim the balance that may not be there if it isn't, 
But the most important thing is to find equilibrium. It is quintessential and essential to your sign to have balance. So you're going to take the scales and balance your own life. And for those of you that do have people that have been taking less than, you're going to ask for what you need and you're going to push back in this month, this moment, uh, whenever you're watching this and whenever you need to hear it, you're going to decide that doesn't work for me anymore. Okay. So I feel very positive about that because if one of these people fall out, there's someone else on the horizon or in the periphery that's going to come in and say, Hey, I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm willing. I'm interested. So don't feel like you just have, it's like one and done. I feel like you're going to prune. It's like a rose bush. You're going to go in and you're going to prune it a little bit and you're going to wait and you'll, then you're going to see where the growth happens. Okay. Some of you are either at a, like for those of you looking at retirement, there's still a little bit, it looks like you're, you're waiting. <laughs> it might be off on the horizon a little bit with the nine of pentacles. So maybe another year, maybe there's something that you're trying to accomplish, but you're, you're darn close. If I was a financial advisor, for those of you that are just kind of like on the fence, some of you, it, it's because you want to, you want to learn something energetically, um, not necessarily that you're missing something. Uh, but what I see here is a change that's necessary. So you're either going to change the financial habits or the workload, or you're going to change career and trajectory, and it's going to bring more abundance to you. you. You have the energy of success, so you have to do what's right for you, um, and you have to kind of get what you need to, to sort of really sustain yourself, right? Lots of passion, um, lots of work getting done this month. Uh, if you aren't, like I said earlier, being a social butterfly, you should. And I just see a ton of projects on the horizon for you and a ton of opportunity. If you're retired, you might be deciding to put some time and energy into family. The Ten of Pentacles was the main card that I pulled here. So I just see a lot of potential. Uh, you might find yourself kind of stuck in the middle. So there's some challenges for you this month, but you're going to be able to navigate them with style, with aplomb, with grace. The only thing that's challenging for you is the change. You may be the hierophant that I saw earlier as well. So don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid to step into the, the cosmos or the unknown because as we saw earlier, there's some good stuff coming through. If you're job seeking, um, you want to you wanna network. It's coming from people that you know. Uh, if you are ready to quit, just make sure that you have that next job in your hip pocket so that you can go from point A to point B without any sort of um, hesitation. If you're retired, again, it feels like there's just some plans and some some sort of, for you, decision-making that you need to, to do. Uh, for those of you looking for a time frame, it does look like uh, be between 8 to, to 12 months even, it's good if you're kind of ready to let something go, whether it's um, kicking a project off, letting go of a job, retiring, traveling. There's something here. Uh, you'll probably be a lot more ready towards October, which is a good month for you anyway because we have... Um, aces, a lot of court cards, and the 10 here, lots of 10s. So um, these can be, uh, this is usually, it can be a 1 or a 10. These can be 1s or 10s. So you got 10s all over the place here. So I feel like birthday time for Libra is going to be a really good period to make the change happen or put that as a sort of like goal for you. Okay. So overall, pretty darn good, I have to say. All right. Let's take a look now at love and relationships. We have the Bob, Bobcat energy coming through, and it's about the things that surprise us, even if we've been in a relationship for a long time, or even if we think we've seen everything, it says life's a mystery. But that mystery and that sort of surprise is what makes it so fun. I never get tired of learning something new when I do the research for a totem. I never get tired of stepping out into the world and just discovering something that I didn't see, whether it's in your city or a type of food or a word, because I'm, you know, uh, kind of like a writing geek. So there's always something new that you, you don't know. And so the more you're open, the more fun that can be. And in relationships, it's about kind of digging deeper and seeing, are there some levels to this person that I didn't know? So let's figure it out. Let's look at this together. We're going to take a look at those of you in a relationship looking for love or relationships or single and happy. When I look at the relationship energy, a reminder that you don't have to be married for this. It could be someone that's on your mind. So whoever's on your mind the most, we'll take a look at that. And um, for those of you in love, this is definitely about the love. So, okay. One thing here is that the partner may want a little bit more. We, or you may want a little bit more. We have the four of pentacles and the five of pentacles. Um, so this can be sort of about how much is enough. That would be one thing that I'm saying. So you may be working so much that they miss you or vice versa. Also, for some of you, there could be some family sort of scars or issues that pop up 
with uh, the other person and you just need to help them through that. A crazy family member. We all have them, right? And it's sometimes hard to deal with that. So they may be holding on to some pain or some energy from that family member and you're going to do your best to help them focus on the fact that they're strong by themselves, they're successful, that this sort of energy is occupying too much stress in their life and there's so much beauty here that's awaiting them. So the main thing that I think current relationships have to move beyond is the stress of the moment, whether it's one another or a family situation or fear of, will I have enough? Because there's all of that there too. Because once you get past that, then I see a big change happening. Some of you uh, that are in an existing relationship that are ready to end it, it'll be okay. I see you being a-okay. I see new friends. I, need, I see new opportunities. So if you've already made that decision to move, to move on, you're going to be just fine. Um, for those of you that are just ready to try something different, I also see that benefiting the relationship. This could be a necessary move. What happens if uh, I quit my job? What happens when the kids go to college? What happens if we try something different? Well, I see pretty good things. It's just a little bit of, like we see two people here kind of out on their own and in different places. So meeting your partner in the middle, I think, like I said earlier, is going to be really important. The good news here is that if you can work through the change, we see a lot of abundance. For some of you, this could be a deal breaker or you just decide to go in a different direction. But this is a turnstile. So you can either go to the next place or you can end up going backward or in another direction. Turnstiles kind of push you around until you're ready to go where you need to go. So this is your karmic lesson. It's time to change. The sooner you go into the change, the better. If you're single and happy or single and looking rather this month, uh, self-confidence needs to be dealt with. And this really is also true in existing relationships. Five of Pentacles is self-confidence. Four of Pentacles is fear. Uh, and then also like moving beyond this feeling of I'm, I never, I want everybody that's ever said I have bad luck in love or I, I'm never going to find someone or whatever. When you put out these statements, it creates reality. So if you're looking, if you really in your heart think like I'd want to find love, say I'm working on myself and I finally feel like I'm ready. I'm on the path to finding someone that's perfect and I'm really happy with where I am. So I could take it or leave it, but I'm choosing to take it. Bring it on, universe. Bring on the love in the highest form. So something like that is a lot more powerful than um, I never have luck with love because then you're creating that statement that sits out there in the ether. So say, in the past I was unlucky, but I'm ready to be lucky now, <laughs> okay? So pull that self-worth energy in, and I think that's going to be really important for you. Um, we see success in your life, success in money, success in love, but some of you may be dealing with something that's going away. I, I think that everybody, even if you're in a relationship uh, and it's okay, there may be someone in your life that's falling away, or there might be someone that you're kind of like ghosting or that has ghosted you. There's a, there's a sort of gentle separation happening, but it shows you who you are and it shows you you didn't need that. So finding your independence, finding your self-worth, focusing on the success in your life, really focusing on this self-love and coming out of your shell a little bit is the key thing that I'd be focusing on. You have options here. We have a queen, a king, and a queen. The queen here is really you. I think that there's basically two choices coming through for you. It's either water or earth. And we see with water, there's a very sort of emotionally <laughs> overwhelming energy, a lot of passion. Person could need a little bit more of your time and energy. Then I get a very grounded approach here with the earth sign. Someone who knows who they are, works really hard, tends to be a social butterfly themselves. So it could be a fun energy. But if you're looking for love, the fact that we got 10 of pentacles and 10 of cups um, right there in rapid succession plus an ace here is saying good things await you. Okay. And if you're single and happy, uh, you still have a ton of potential to network, but I really see the opportunity and work for you. So this is a breakout month uh, when it comes to uh, wealth and abundance and opportunities. So have some fun with that if you'd like to. Let's move on to your destiny card here, and it's the seer. The seer was reversed, but ultimately she's a sort of like quintessential symbol for high priestess, right? So the interesting thing with this is we see her eyes going backward. Um, there's a lot of introspective work that some of you are doing this month, thinking truly like, who am I? How did I get here and what do I want? I think those are good check-in questions each and every week, each and every month. 
uh, because we do change over time and what we want shifts as we age. So for you, I want you to pay attention to what your higher self, what your third eye, we can see it up there is bringing forth. When the card is reversed, we know what to do and how to do it, but we don't always do it. So the important thing for you is really to trust, embark, and embrace upon that sort of path of change that is availing itself to you. Okay. So really good energy overall, Libra. And there's been some, you know, months over the past year where it's been challenging, but I feel like the main challenge for you is just to let something go. For each of you, that death card is going to be a little bit different, but it's not, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. There's something that's in your head or in your life that needs to exit. And once it exits, abundance is everywhere. Okay. Let's pull a card for the big idea and see what's coming through as a sort of connective and overarching thread. You may hear some construction in the background. Um, it's actually kind of a nice metaphor for the work that we're doing this month. I really do feel like it is a construction month here. Okay, let's take a look. We have the Four of Cups, and I love the way that this one was illustrated. So the Four of Cups here is showing something's coming through, but you have to be aware of it. You have to be willing and able to see it. Uh, so sometimes we, she's so lost in her own sort of world that she's missing something that the universe wants to hand to her. Uh, so for you, there could be some unrequited or unappreciated love or, yeah, I would say love. Someone around you is trying to get your attention. So this could be just a friend, a family member. It could be your pet that wants to go on a walk or something. But there's someone around you that wants your attention. And if you're too attuned to someone else or to something else, you miss it. And I was talking about this recently. I just cut the, uh, the sort of video. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you should. And Twitter, I've actually started putting little video clips in ca case you miss the monthlies. It kind of gives you a little flavor of what we're talking about. But I remember actually talking about the Four of Cups, which is what we don't realize sometimes is that we're so used to a cookie cutter idea of what something should be that everything's going to look like that gingerbread man. But what happens if it comes through in a different shape or form? The Four of Cups is actually an offering from the universe. Hey, have you tried this? Have you thought of this? She's Zen, she's open, but she's really channeling one thing and she's missing the fact that it's manifested. It just manifested a little bit differently. The timing may be a little bit inconvenient. The shape, form, or overall sort of, uh, yeah, appearance of it may not be what you expected but that doesn't mean that it's not precisely what you need right now. So open yourself up to taste, to try, to attempt, to kind of like take in something that the universe is bringing your way. Look to the left, look up, look down, look around. It may be less obvious than you think, or it may be right in front of you. So the opportunity is there. I can taste it. I can feel it. I can almost reach it. So make sure that you're not missing that. That's the big idea is that it's closer than you think and that it's different than you think. The other thing for this is a reminder that no matter how far you progress in your given path, there's always going to be someone who's got a little bit more. They've gone a little bit higher. They're a little bit more popular. But again, when we go back into the sort of core of things, how are you feeling? Is it enough? Are you satisfied? Are you satiated? Are you expanding? If you are, everything's exactly where it needs to be. Okay. So let's go ahead now and take a look at your um, blessings and blocks. And just to remind folks of where we're at, we've gone through channel messages, the Celtic cross and expanded forecast, the big idea. Now we're gonna take a look at one thing to embrace, a blessing, and one thing that may be a bit of a block for you, okay? So I'll pull both cards and then we'll kind of break down what they mean for you. Blessing, high priestess, thank you. And the block is the sun reversed. All right, let's talk about these. So the blessing card here, High Priestess, what she's really saying is, I can do this. I know how to do this. I know what I need to do. And, and it's going to happen if I believe in that. And I mentioned here, you've got two High Priestesses, basically. You have the Seer card reverse, which is doubting yourself. And now you have the High Priestess card here. So to be truly in your power this month, I want you to be careful of the statements. Say things that are powerful and affirmative. Um, I am changing myself for the better. I am growing. I'm learning. Um, I'm not afraid to try this. 
I'm going to make this work. This is going to happen sooner than I thought. Uh, I'm not blocked. I release the old contracts because the high priestess can actually magically cut some of that stuff out. So as we said before, I release the contracts of poverty and chastity and the limits of the past and the debts and the fears and the frustrations. I'm ready to grow and receive, not sort of have this constant tug of war. So what you want, you can create, um, but you have to think of it actively and affirmatively. Uh, and so active meaning I am, I will, it is. And then the affirmation being the the fact that it's coming to you, that, it, that you're not going to put things like won't, never, can't, shouldn't. Uh, we're taking out those negative words and putting in positive affirmative words instead. Okay? It's a good energy. Um, psychic development, uh, intuitive development, and I would also just say like the ability to really... If you're going to be leading or connecting with a, a disparate group of people, you're going to be able to kind of be that glue or that common thread. So pretty good for you. Okay. Next piece here, we have the sun card in reverse for the block. The block here is someone else's ego. Could be too big for the room. Um, they're coming in and they're really kind of saying, pay attention to me. Or if you, you have a moment to shine, they're trying to kind of like step in on that spotlight. So... The thing is, they may get a moment or two, but they're not going to dampen your shine uh, and your ability to sort of be there and, and be amazing. But you might have to put some boundaries down or just say, oh, thank you. That's a great idea. Let's hold it. Let me finish my thought. You had a chance to talk. Let me finish. You're going to be the queen of swords and hold that space, hold that power and just say, sure, let's we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me finish what I what I what I started. And. People may not be used to that, but they will step back and they'll let you finish when you do that. I think that there's someone there that also might just be really playful, um, somewhat immature. A lot of times, especially if this is attached to um, a man in your life, it doesn't have to be, it can be divine masculine, but if there is a man in your life and the sun card comes through, um, they're very focused on what they want, what they need, and they like to be taken care of. But again, this can, I don't really read gender anymore in cards. This can be anyone in your life that fits that mold. So they, there just may be someone that you have to kind of help grow up a little bit and help them see that there's more than just them, <laughs> right? Hey, Apollo, what's going on, buddy? Let's put your blanket in there so you can relax. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of my little son in the background there, and see that worked. So there may be someone that just needs a moment like that uh, to just be comfortable and then they behave. <laughs> so there's always someone out there that is, hey, look at me. But that's how you do it. He's okay now. So that's why I put little blankets in there because he needs something to feel safe and kind of dig around. So whoever it is, give them a moment, give them their little spotlight and then say, all right, let's, let's get back to work. You have to be like the parent, right? So there's a good teaching moment there. <laughs> Cute little puppy, can't help but love him. All right, so let's take a look now at the viewer's and reader's choice. Uh, let me get everything set up here, and we'll give you a chance to vote on some things. I feel like, without a doubt, I want to look at growth opportunities with resources, so I think I'm going to opt into that for the reader's choice. But let's uh, give me one second here, and we're going to take a look at everything here. So, okay, so first things first. I, I want to look at the death card here as well. So I want to see what the change is and what the opportunity to grow is for you. So um, we'll create a poll real quick and let's see. Viewer's choice. Let's take a look at necessary changes uh, and transformation. Then let's take a look at the confidence, self-confidence, self-worth, and see if there's messages around that. And uh, I'd also like to look at just possibly like um, incoming love and relationships. All right, so you folks can vote on that. While you're voting, I'm going to uh, take a look at a reader's choice. And my reader's choice was, you got so many great cards coming through this month around opportunity, resources, whether it's jobs or uh, new things that you can focus on. I want to see what you can do to really kind of like embrace this opportunity in the month ahead. Okay, 
does it feel right for you? We've got justice coming through here. And basically for you, this has to be fair. Um, we've got balance coming through twice. Okay, so if the balance is lacking, this is not where you should be sort of focusing your energy. You have the capacity to say no. You have the capacity to say yes. You could start your own business if you want. Um, you have to do what's right. There's so many different aspects of justice. But you're also completely in your power this month. This is you, Libra, shining through uh, nice and bright and strong. So I would say for you, if someone like this, we're looking at the, the block here. If someone comes through and they try to steal your thunder, your shine, your moment in the spotlight, you come through and you say, nope. Um, you're not going to have to fight. You're just going to have to be yourself. Really fight and advocate for what is yours and, and to really kind of create and, and, and embrace uh, this moment in time. Okay. So some of you may be called to do something in the law because, of course, justice can be legal matters. Please, by the way, speaking of that, negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Um, and I want you to look at all the fine print, make sure that there's one, at least one set of eyes that goes on this that is a lawyer uh, that understands all the, the, the fine print because I feel like there's definitely an opportunity for more uh, because of what we're seeing here. And you may have to sort of call someone's bluff, uh, your own in, as well. So if something is already not going to be worth it, then be willing to walk away uh, because it's probably a bad endeavor anyway. If you can get a plan B or C or an, a, another offer to counter it with, even better. But it's sometimes better to walk away. Okay. Let's see which poll, uh, which poll item is winning here. Okay, we have a clear winner. Necessary changes in transformation. I'm so impressed that you guys chose the death card. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's important to look at it. Sometimes people are afraid, but uh, I knew you wouldn't be Libra. So let's take a look at death and see what is the necessary change. What's that sort of gateway card? Six of pentacles, indeed. All right, so let's look at this. So for many of you, this is really the answer to the four and five of pentacles. Could we get any more pentacles? I don't think so. Um, so for you, there are choices and scales again. You're showing up everywhere, by the way. Balance and balance and more balance, right? So. The change that you're going to go into is one that brings you a sense of there may be a little bit of a sacrifice, there may be a little bit of a trade off, but it's sort of like this is worth it because I get more of this. I'll give you an example. Actually, when I decided to quit my corporate job in 2015, um, I had to give up a lot. I, I mean, I was giving up a predictable job, health insurance. Uh, I didn't have to give up my retirement, but I'm not in, like no more is going back into that at this point, and except what I invest in, uh, you know, like uh, I reserve, you know, whatever on my own. But so there were all these sort of like dependable things. But what I got back was I was no longer stressed. I was really stressed when I was working the day job. Um, I got to, for the first time, like see the world around me. I, my neighbors didn't know me. There's a scene in the, the, the wedding planner, that old JLo movie, where she's kind of like had too much to drink and she's being taken home and she's buzzing neighbors and they don't know who she is. That actually ha happened, not that scene, because <laughs> that's crazy. But no, like I had neighbors after I quit my job that said, oh, are you new here? Did you just move into that unit? And I thought, wow, I was so absent from my life that neighbors didn't know me, that friends hadn't seen me for a while. And so what I gave up initially in what I was making, I gained in the ability to um, see the world around me, make new friendships, be healthier, be happier, uh, adopt uh, this little rescue puppy behind me and actually enjoy having a dog rather than having him be at daycare and not seeing him. So there were so many, so many good things that came through the change that I was on the winning side of the Six of Pentacles. I gave up a little bit, but I gained so much more. Um, so your death transformation change opportunity means that there's a little bit of sacrifice but there's a lot of gain and that's how you can decide if the change is right for you and then i always had faith and vision that eventually i'd be okay and i was it just took seven years to kind of like fully build myself back up to where i was but i was happy with the growth in the in between because you get to choose it you get to mold it you get to shape it so for you the the, the sort of like pros that you're looking for are going to be much different. Maybe you want more money. 
Maybe you want more travel. Maybe you want something that I can't even imagine here. I want you to kind of think about your, your list of what makes life rich, what makes it engaging, and really use this as the litmus test, as the deciding factor. Is this good or is this not good for me? That's what I see. Um, Six of Pentacles, by the way, just in standard kind of reading, would be saying no when you need to, yes when you need to, and not pulling yourself too thin. It's the base card that is necessary for financial independence and happiness. So you got so many great money cards this month and so many great resource cards and balance cards. I don't know what's going on with you, but it looks like next month is going to be amazing. And you're on that journey right now. So if you're a little frustrated when you get this reading or listen to it, or if you're listening to me live right now, stick with it because I see some positive changes, but you have to be the one that holds the scales and says yes and no. Okay. Hopefully that helps. You guys picked an excellent choice on that one. I really like the message as well. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at where we've come and where we're headed. Um, we've been through pretty much all of the reading. We have one other big thing coming through, which is meditation, sound bath, and final card. I'd like you to prepare for the final card now because sometimes people uh, forget as we do a quick meditation. So write down your question that you have for me. Writing is a good way to put it out there. You can say it or tap it into your phone as well. Just get it out energetically so it's around you. While you're doing that, while we're kind of like focusing on your question, just a quick reminder or two that you can always learn about upcoming readings on my social media platforms. I'd love for you to join me there. Like I said, on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, um, I put little video snippets of what's happened. So it's a good way to know like what's going on with this sign. You can kind of like <laughs> do a quick sampling and then see the regular videos here. Sometimes, very, very sporadically, I'll do a live on either uh, Instagram or TikTok. So it's a, another way to kind of follow me and get some cool stuff. So uh, please do follow if you'd like. The other thing I'd like to remind you to do is to subscribe if you've never done so. It's free. It helps the channel grow. Hit the like button as well. I think we're doing pretty well. We have about half of the people that are watching that have hit the like. But um, if you are not watching on a TV, just Thumbs up once, don't do it twice or it goes down. <laughs> once is good. Um, I already saw we had some great super stickers and super chats, so thank you in advance. I'll say a special thank you at the very end. And uh, my website is a great place to see the upcoming schedule. I'll be reading for Scorpio tomorrow, and then on the weekend I'll be doing the uh, collective. Every Sunday I'm here to help you with the collective reading. Um, and then next week we'll be looking at Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius. So. Check out the schedule for more information. Now, let's take a look at your meditation. Uh, as I'm getting everything set up, I'm gonna give you a choice of instruments that you can uh, use for this or that I can use, and then we'll get into your final card. So you can either listen to the Crystal Pyramid, or you can uh, take a listen to the Singing Bowl. By the way, when this goes on replay, one thing that I'd love to hear from you is what you like most in these monthly readings and what you would like to see more of. Save it for when you go on replay because um, I always notice like seasonal shifts in viewing and I've noticed some changes. So definitely more people looking at the weekend collective and um, different amounts watching the monthly. So tell me what you like about the monthlies and I'll po probably post something maybe around the weekend on the community tab as well. I always like to take viewer feedback. Okay. Close your eyes and let's, uh, first of all, let's just tune into the body. I want you to listen to any of the thoughts that you have and also listen to what your body is telling you, any aches, any pains, etc. And whatever you're feeling right now, just take a nice deep breath. Imagine that the sun is shining down on you. And as you breathe in, it's almost as if you are breathing in those little particles of light. Taking a deep breath, pulling it into your heart center, and just feeling this sense of opening and releasing. On the inhale, I want you to reclaim your power. We talked a little bit earlier about uh, the contract release, so I'm going to help you a little bit here in this particular meditation on contract release. On the inhale, imagine people in your life that have required a lot of your time and a lot of your energy. As you inhale, I want you to see almost like these little fireflies or little light particles. See yourself reclaiming the energy from these people around you. They're creating a perfect circle around your body. 
and you reclaim the energy that you gave them. And then on the exhale, any of the heavier stuff, any of their energy that you've held into your person or your body, I want you to return it with love and with light and allow the light above you to purify any of the darker frequencies so that it's just going to be an exchange of light and light. So light from them to you that you once had, light from you to them that they once had, until you see equilibrium and balance, that you are your own energy, that they are their, their own energy. Keep breathing as we do this meditation and imagine that these beautiful halos of light are starting to wrap themselves around you. And um, you can actually start to, uh, it's almost like you're a potter. You could mold them if you want to, you can do anything that you want, but every move that you make, every step, every sort of thought, um, the energy is following you. You have this malleable um, sort of halo of light around you that you can work with. Think to yourself what you want to do with your power and reclaim your power. Uh, as we sort of step into the meditation here, I want you to, th if you want to, you can say these things. Uh, I release any debts, any fears, any frustrations from the past. I reclaim my power. I reclaim my potential. I'm ready for love and abundance in the highest forms. If there were any vows that somehow limited possibilities, those vows, those contracts are null and void. Take your cosmic pen here, use the light and make something, write a word, write a thought, draw a picture, imagine something that you want to create. See that, own that, have that kind of burned into your retina and see what spirit wants to show you as we meditate. All right, we're going to take a, mo a moment here while I play the crystal pyramid and uh, just enjoy, just relax. And then I will come back and we will look at your final question, your final card. Take a deep breath. Pull all of that energy around you that you've reclaimed, all the halos of light around you um, into your mind, into your body, into your spirit. And in this moment in time, I want you to truly believe, truly own the understanding that you are complete, you are whole. You are not looking for a missing piece, a better part, uh, etc. You are exactly who and what you need to be in this moment in time. Gently open your eyes when you're ready. And I think focusing on believing that you are complete, there is no better half, there is no missing piece, there is no incomplete version of you. 
you are exactly what you need to be right now is going to be important. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at your final card. Focus on the question that you have for me, whatever it might be, and let's see what the universe has in the way of information for you. All right. Change. Uh, we have the world card here. This is a fantastic card to come through for you. So the world card in reverse or upright really is about necessary change. We actually see um, two snakes kind of consuming one another. It's almost like the Ouroboros, but um, a slightly different version of it. So with the world card in reverse, what's really coming through is uh, for many of you, you know exactly what it is that you need to do, but there is this sort of fear or this uncertainty of what comes next. How do I deal with this? Is this going to be worth um, the energy that I'm going to go through for this? And the answer invariably is yes, but there is this sort of opening on the horizon. So this can indicate a big energetic shift within you. It could just be you see and understand yourself in a way that you didn't before. There can be a change of location, a change of relationship. It's a, nat uh, a natural sort of progression from the death card here that we had. So here we have a uh, change that might be coming in a way that's surprising. And here we see something where it's sort of like, yes, but it's bringing about expansion. So necessary change plus the expansion that it brings. Uh, so I would say the one thing for you is that change equals growth. Since we're ending with the, uh, the world card here, change equals growth. Are you ready to step into that growth? Uh, can you also realize that ends are beginnings? Okay. But I think a, a change of location could be very good for some of you and change in general could be very good for some of you. <laughs> so hopefully that, that helps and that brings about um, the answer and the, the sort of like clarity that you needed. Um, the world card is kind of interesting too because it can indicate four different seasons. The wheel of fortune can, the world can. So for some of you, you're on the precipice of something where it may actually come to complete fruition almost one year from now. So focus on all the sort of steps through the journey over the next year. So I mentioned before, some of you have like October as a sort of guidepost. Some of you may even be one year out looking at something from a year from now. This is just confirmation that when it's all said and done, it's exactly what you need to expand. For those of you that are um, artists or creatives, this card is about um, expanding uh, distribution, uh, dissemination, production, all of that. So finding a bigger audience and a bigger way to get things out. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed today's reading and you got the guidance that you needed. Um, one last thing with the world cards, if, if you were looking for something to be over, this is also a clear sign that it's over. If the question is like, am I done with this? Am, am I going to be okay? You're going to be okay. It's over, but you're being asked to move on and move, move in a different direction. Okay. Uh, so let's wrap up for today. Again, a couple of quick notes. If you want to look at my schedule, which I talked about earlier, you can find it on my website. The pinned link is up above in the comments area. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, I'd love for you to do that. Again, I pinned the comment with a link to my website. Uh, you can subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm going to give a quick shout out here to anyone that gave super chats or super stickers. If you're watching on replay, there's also a super thanks option. So thank you to anyone that did that. All right, let's go ahead now and say thank you. All right, so uh, for anybody that has been kind enough today to give back a little bit, I just want to call you out and say uh, I appreciate it. All right, so give me one second to pull the screen up here and we'll get started. I'm going to start with any new members first and anybody that's joined in the past or rejoined in the past day or so. So uh, let's see. The first person here that I see rejoining after 16 months, um, hopefully I say the first name correctly, Tequila, I think it is, Tequila Tyson. Thank you so much and thanks for being around for uh, a solid year and a half. I appreciate that. Um, let's see, Tony uh, uh, rejoined after one, sorry, after eight months. Thank you so much. Mon Monique rejoined uh, after, no, just brand new, joined out, just joined a day ago. So thank you and welcome. We have uh, Parul Aurora rejoining after three months. Alexandros um, is joining after rejoining after three. Jules in July. Uh, Cheryl, I'm sorry, Cheryl Charnell and Regina Altweger and KIK, Elvira Mai, and I think that's everyone from the past couple of days. So thank you for joining or rejoining. I appreciate it. And let me say thank you to anybody that gave a super sticker or super chat. So one moment here. 
and let's take a look at who gave back today. All right, so Libra, um, thank you for kicking things off today, uh, Melanie. I appreciate that. Let's see, Andrew Mora, thank you very much. And Robert, so good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, and I appreciate the $50, $50 as well. Thank you. Isha Marie, thank you. Kathy Ahern, thank you so much as well. Um, Becca Lee, Andrew Mora, uh, Vicky Harkins, Carol Cazeta, I think it is, and um, Criola Rice. Thank you so much, everybody, for your contributions, your kindness today, and your support. I saw a couple of folks that um, are also people that I've read for in the past, and I appreciate that. Good to see you here, and good to have you a part of this sort of community. Everybody, uh, I hope to see you on Sunday if you can make it. Thank you for making today a very special reading. I see a lot of abundance coming through. I'd like to end with this beautiful uh, 10 of Pentacles card. It really does show me that your star is rising. There's a lot of options and opportunities on the horizon. So keep on doing what you're doing. You're headed in the right direction. All right. Lots of love and light to everybody. I, again, I will see you Friday. I'll see you on Sunday. Until then, take care of yourself. Thanks to Maria for her helps with uh, moderation today as well. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye.